stream hosted by Moonduck, the Boiler. What do we got, Mott? All right, we got a tie ban. That's what we got. Well, that's it. What? I don't Infamous know. is like, listen, we yeah. like Tidehunter. We down. lost with it. And now we don't want EG to beat us with it. Exactly. So it's been right, banned. Can, that's the thought All right, hold process. on. Hold on here. Whoever, one of you two, can you yeah. look at past games for EG? Have they first two picked Tide anytime recently? Okay. Uh, I will look. I got it right here. Okay. Investigate that ahead. for me. Can't alt tab. So strange. Yep, give me one sec. I got Thanks it. Thanks to I mean, like a second, for making it so I can't alt tab. A second pick isn't the craziest thing ever, but banning at first phase is really weird. Yeah, I mean, they, they did it against Newbie, which makes sense, but... Um... He's really scary. Is he? Hey, it's the Watermelon Man. You don't want to play against the Watermelon Man, Brax. You just don't. Muffin, They're man. preventing the bonus bounties from creating the uh, aqua themed lineup. Um, okay, so they it looks like they picked Tide against uh, Secret in the second match that they lost in 24 remain. minutes. Uh, it was it was a fourth pick Tide. Clearly a staple remain. of EG. Um, that is the only Tide Hunter I'm seeing on record in the last. EG's. Fourth pick. Fourth pick against uh, Secret earlier today. Infamous just didn't want to play against Ty. That's it, guys. That's all. There, there's no other questions needed to be asked. Well, then EG played it 20 days ago in the qualifier for Dream League in one of their games. And they beat Complexity with it. Yes. In the grand finals. Seconds remaining. So, yeah. They're, I mean, they're playing Tide, but not, not a huge Five amount. Seconds remaining. Are we going to um, see a first two Abaddon for EG? Perhaps. Oh, the Abaddon against Bane, pretty good. Abaddon is very good. And it is Abaddon, not a Abaddon. Uh, Abaddon. How many? I mean, I, I've not had this conversation with you, and I'm going to tell you right now. That's Abad, what I'm Abaddon. Suns fan, even though you're wrong, I respect your unwillingness to back down. <laughs> Thank you, Zayori. It's a, lot it's a special it. kind of crazy. Shadow okay, Demon well. Sand King. More comfort picks for EG. Great support duo. Yes. Rex. Hi, Mott. Tell me about the Shadow Demon we've been seeing so much of recently. Ten seconds well, remaining. he has a skill that makes illusions of people. Oh. Five. Then he's got a skill Luna that again? Uh, maybe it is possible. He's a pretty good hero. I mean, his yeah. talents aren't bad. His uh, abilities aren't bad as well. He got some buffs. For the, uh, what's it called? The second skill? Soul uh, Catcher. Soul Catcher. Soul Catcher, yeah, that's the one. Where it uh, applies at an AoE, so you can't miss the target you're trying to focus down if there's like two or three units or whatever. So, And you get an illusion of them, so you can keep disrupting it if it's like a Radiance Carrier. But, um, I don't know. I think most importantly, it is the carries that he pairs with, right? Or the carries that he's against. Like when he plays against Morphling or Luna, you can always use those illusions against them, and then he yeah. seems really strong. And just the, uh, the whole purge thing that goes through BKB is quite nice. Yes. I felt like he was very underrated previously, but that also has a lot to do with um, what heroes are currently in right now. So, yeah. Yeah, Shadow Demon, there's always that reaction when you have a hero who's totally broken. We all remember the Shadow Demon Luna days. Shadow Demon gets nerfed quite a bit, and it feels like, all oh, that hero's garbage now. And then he gets these small buffs over time, and then one day somebody realizes, you know, this hero is actually really good again, and nobody's figured it out. And I feel like Shadow Demon it, like followed that trajectory almost to a T. Am I crazy? I thought they changed the Soul Catcher to be back to a random target. I think they did. I oh, think they did changed they? it back. I All think right. so. I think they changed it, and then they reverted it back. Oh, that would make more sense, because now you get an illusion of the, the hero you're Oh, yeah, 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 that's the change. Okay, yeah, yeah. If that's okay. the Soul Catcher change. Yeah, it's too many changes, man. Too many it's changes. It's so, so many. But you know what? That's why we're doing this together. So we can. It's almost like <laughs> it's your job to keep up with Dota, guys. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's funny how that works out. Doom, Doom Bringer. Radiant Very Doom nice. Oh seen... wait, they changed his name. My bad. Forgot Doom. about that one, guys. It's just Doom. Mm. It's just Doom. Come on. Now. Just Doom. We've seen a number of Doom bans today, but I don't think we've actually seen it up. No. He's been that like third, fourth ban material. I like this hero a lot. Oh, do you? Yes. Seconds, well, he's a lot harder than Viper. Wow, dude. Oh, what are you implying? Slam. Why are you slamming me? What are you implying here, Andrew? I'm implying that 
you have a proclivity towards do you guys like heroes. do you guys like doom as a the four or the sure. three um which do you four. prefer yeah. i think four is a little bit scarier three if it's one of those matchups where he can actually farm and have presence in the lane but um if he gets zoned out hard as the Five three like he really? there are not there are some matchups that doom does not win right Yep, he gets owned in a lot of matchups, but if you have like a Lich, for example, that used to be something we saw all the time. Lich Doom owns. It gives him that lane. It also gives him armor since he has none. And then that's when he can start Look at to, the hero. To slay. Like, how can this hero have no armor? Look at him. Yeah, he looks like he's wearing some... Yeah, it's true. The lore. Plate mail or something. What happened? Bane should decorative. have no armor. That's what you don't understand. The, the Hellfire has... Uh, Lowered the durability on his breastplate. Ah, and he's close okay. to shattering. Okay, that so actually it's... makes sense. Yeah, that's pretty good, Zyor. A good save. Good well save. Well said. Zyor, I was about to write explain, a letter to Valve. How do you explain Doom casting Doom? It's just his name. What if Bane casted Bane? <laughs> <laughs> he throws himself at people. That's what happens. I don't know, man. He's like a demonic hell creature, so I feel like you can't apply logic to things like that. You know, I don't know what's going on in the Dota underworld. You'd have to ask a real lore expert for that, but I have a feeling it's got something to do with the corruption that happens in the Nether region. Our, our lore is not. Jesus, a, all right. We we need to go. We need to go back to school for some Dota lore. We need artifacts, is what we need actually. Yeah. I bet that'll get us up into the Dota lore scene. But uh, Doom is a, definitely a versatile pick. Um, even though I, I think he's worse in the three, it still gives you some flexibility, right? That is true. Yeah, and it's a, a deterrent to certain heroes. Probably won't see Storm Spirit. Do you guys think that Shadow Demon is enough to dissuade Infamous from picking Mirana? Keep saying this hero. I don't think it's going to get picked. I mean, right, they we'll could pick about it. That, Mont. Do we'll they want to lose that, with Mirana? Would that feel good? <laughs> Man, why why do you keep Jesus. trying to sell this combo, Suns fan? Because it's, it's, it's so slammer, easy dude. to execute. It, it's like a brain dead combo, you know? But there is a Shadow Demon, so it's not as easy. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, in the last game, isn't Abaddon literally the hard counter to that duo? Yeah. Well, yeah, Abaddon but he's. Down. They could. They could. I mean, this is second phase. They can easily get rid of here like that, you know? Yeah. But Plus, they they're not taking Abaddon now. They have Beastmaster Saiyan King. It's still there. I That's mean, true. they could put uh, the Beastmaster or the Abaddon safe lane and give him the one. I don't think they will, but that's always a Arteezy Beastmaster? Is that what you're trying to tell me? EG's no, well, maybe. <laughs> oh, they picked a the Morphling. I thought EG might have picked this, but All right. they pick it instead. Well, this is good. This is a game-changing hero. We've seen Morphling dominate today. Uh, we have not seen Infamous play him yet. So this is pretty interesting. It's, uh... You know, we've seen a lot of Morphlings uh, morph into Sand King, seconds, really? and then they stun in and then transform and just kill somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. That type. Seconds, really? There's some pretty ridiculous heroes he can morph into, but they have Shadow Demon against Morphling. Probably one of the best heroes at killing Morph. Yeah. I don't know. No, I agree, I'm, I agree with you, but I don't know what, what he... I don't know if you're right, Brax. I don't know about that one, Brax. Brax, you're crazy. Remember the Shadow Demon Thank Elder you. Titan used to do the hard counter combo Radiant to uh, Morphling? Oh. And he would explode when he got uh, hit by a soul catcher. Ooh, yeah. Medusa. So Medusa, we have seen her banned out actually almost every game today. Uh, yeah. This is a, a change of pace. She has become very high value in terms of pecking order. And EG will grab her. Ten seconds remaining. All right, so what's Infamous's response to this Medusa? There's, uh, where are the mana Five burners? Nyx Assassin is possible, but... I don't think they're going to pick Anti-Mage here. I definitely Tusk. not. Tusk comes out. All right. Yep, that's a big mana burner right there. Yeah. No doubt. Yep. Good For thing sure. Tusk burns all the mana when he hits his level 30 talents. You know so. what's a good mana burner is Mirana. Eh? Well, but doesn't this mean that Doom is uh, position 3 now? Yeah, either Doom or Tusk. And I would assume it would be the Doom. Man, yeah, more than likely the Doom. And what, what would he be up against, though, is the question. Do they do, like, a... Uh... Wouldn't it be... Nah, is there any out. world where Infamous does an aggro try to try to get a better matchup for the Doom in the offlane? Is that they crazy? Could, but um, Doom probably loses to Beastmaster. Well, I mean, I don't think he wins that matchup, he but Doom should boar. be able to farm, right? I mean, it's... Uh... Yeah, he can still farm for sure. It'll be better for Doom, but I don't think it'll be very good for Infamous's lane. Like Shadow Demon, Sand King, and then... Well, I guess it depends on what their carry is, right? If their carry can fight or not. But I assume it's going to be a, a pretty 
good fighting hero since they already have a carry in the Medusa. You think Medusa is going mid two? I would assume. Yeah, yeah. usually. I mean, yeah. she is a flex pick in that regard, but definitely shines more in the mid lane. So the the reason I brought up earlier that the whole Doom being three versus four is because I think with the talent changes, position three Doom is actually way better than four now, just because you don't get that Devour Gold until level fifteen, which is much harder to accomplish as a position four. Um, but he doesn't. It just feels like Doom falls off a lot. You know, and being position three allows you to not do so as as drastically, I guess. Especially if you're able to get the items that you really need. Like, when's the last time you guys have seen a refresher Doom in a game, as opposed to like two years ago, right? I mean, the Dooms of two years ago got ridiculous and farmed. And there's no yeah. reason that you can't get as farmed though with that devour. I'm a Are cop. you kidding me? You've got to be kidding. I hey, actually. Hey, Mott. Sorry, what was that? What was that, bro? Uh, Oh, we're, we're going to see how potent the Marana Bane combo is. Yeah, they're going to be good. They're going mean, to do great with it. <laughs> There's a right. mana burn. Yeah, you, have, you get the Fusal Blade and you have the 20, level 20 mana burn. I mean, come I'm on. actually done. Come on, bro. Seconds remaining. All right. So oh. Um, <laughs> I think they lose, though. So it wow. doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the last pick. Oh, that's pretty sick. Yeah. That's a good Medusa. last pick here. So now you have hmm. a Silence. Amazing against the Morphling. You have basically guaranteed insurance policy that uh, Medusa wins the mid lane now uh, with that extra damage. And you've got some nasty push. I, I like it. It's going to be yeah, a tough game for Infamous, I think. Who does uh, Doom cast Doom on in this game? It doesn't... Uh, like, you can't really Doom Sand King because uh, Sand King is going to get his spells on first. Shadow Demon is going to be in the back. I guess Beastmaster, but I don't know. None of these targets seem very good to Doom. You're it's absolutely right. right. I don't know. There isn't really an ideal target. I guess catching the Beastmaster before he ults is best. Probably just dropping it on Medusa to try to lock her down in a fight. Like, you can drop it on Medusa before she can stone gaze. Stone gaze yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. But but you have to assume she's going Lincoln's this game, right? Or maybe not. Uh, they have a fair bit to break it, but it could still be a good Lincoln skewer. All right. Well, gang, game on, two, Infamous versus EG, our final series here on Dream League 2. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Sons Fran, Fran, <laughs> Sons Fran and Brax <laughs> will now take it away and soothe your hearts with fine Dota 2 commentary. Thank you for the great segue, Zayori. Uh, Sons Fan here with Braximus the Maximus. That's going to be a thing, by the way. It's happening. Don't fight it. Okay, sounds Fran. Thank, thank you. I don't. What is a son's Fran exactly? I don't know. What was he thinking of? To confuse. I think he was trying to say friends, and it turned to son's Fran. <laughs> son's Franz. Something like that. All right. While we wait, we can look at the cosmetics. If Mod is doing camera, I do believe. If you can zoom in on Doom's face, this is the ugliest Doom helmet in the game. Just is so it you the guys DC know. DC helmet? No, there's no DC Doom set. <laughs> okay, okay, just making sure. I would never allow something so ugly to be made. Not, it's not a fan. that bad, is it? Look at the. That's like a kill me face. You know what I mean when I say that? You know those those uh those little comics where somebody's just really ugly and they're like. Just kill me. That's what this is. Okay. Do you want him Just to look super friendly as he's going to kill his enemies? I'm not. I'm not saying he needs to be friend. He's he's depressed because of how ugly his face is. That's what I'm trying to say. That does not he sound can't like see doom. His face. You saying there's no mirrors in the Dota world? Do you see any? I mean, there was a Terror Blade in the last game. That's reflection. At the very least, okay. that's a mirror. Not in this game. He's clear. Uh, there's Shadow Demon Illusions. Huh? Right, you're what do you think about off. that? There's a Medusa He's gonna, 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 gonna see look two away. of his faces. He has to look away from the Stone Gaze. That's true. That's a good point. But that's the thing. He has an uglier face than Medusa. Shouldn't he have that ability? With that cosmetic? That's a good point, actually. Exactly. Thank you. Anywho, back to the actual game. This is a... This is game two of a best of three between EG and Infamous. EG won game one in... A ridiculously stomp fashion but infamous of course looking to even it up or else they're out 
of the major. That's right, and they don't want to be out. I think that's safe to say. Maybe yeah, not always, just but confirming. in this case, definitely the case. Look at Arteezy's cape. He's got the golden cape. I believe that's going to be the golden gust come, so something oh, wow. for you guys to look forward to in this game. Papita, is he actually looking for uh, an arrow? Looks like EG's just going to give it up. The battle begins. So Infamous will take three bounty runes. Very nice. And we do get to see another Morphling. So let's theorycraft the Morphling again. Always a lot of fun. Okay. So for the enemy, I'll do my version. You do yours. I think, I mean, Burrow Strike's got to be top of the list of best skills yep. you can get. Definitely. There's some uh, some wonky things he can do. Like he can become the Drow Ranger and give his teammates the aura. Oof. Universe. He's just going to TP out. Yeah, that's true. Didn't think about that. What else? What do you like? Well, if he's low on mana, he can always turn into Medusa and throw out some Mystic Snakes. And that's true. Top lane, Burrow Strike, Fears here as well with the right clicks. Will it be enough to take him out? The last one from Crit is enough. First Blood, the wave EG. Isn't that so, so sad that Doom can die to that with Scorched Earth just because he has zero armor? No. Yeah, it is sad. Like, any other offlaner would not die to that, I he, feel like. Did he have Fairy Fire the whole time? No, he just bought it. Oh, he, he just he, bought, he it. bought it as he died. Okay. I'm gonna say that definitely would have helped him live. But not to be, unfortunately, for him, as he's just gonna be resigned to this top lane in the trees, leeching experience. And obviously, without Devour as of yet, he won't be able to use that in the jungle or anything to that effect. As looks like Papita will take out Sumail in the mid lane. Gracious me. He's just gonna run away from crit as well. Burrow Strike will apply, though. He has some damage, but it's not going to be enough to actually kill Marana. I missed that mid lane. I guess uh, they just clicked him down, huh? To use those leaps to keep autoing him. I mean, they, they have the setup. We talked well, about this. Sleeps, okay. Oh, you're right. They don't have the setup like we talked about, Brax. That's right. And in fact, he goes for Enfeeble. So... Trying to win this lane from a CS department, I guess, is the goal here for Infamous. Let's yeah, see how that ends up working for them. You know, I feel like Bane is uh, one of the better heroes against Medusa because typically you can't kill her, but you can reduce her damage, and she doesn't build these high damaging items. She builds a lot mm -hmm. of stat-based items to tank up, so when you have level 4 in people, she probably deals zero damage. That's a good point. Of course, you do have Draw on your team, though, so that'll mitigate... A little bit yeah. of that effectiveness from, from Infamous' side, at least. But, yeah, I, I always I always fear the Medusa mids when there's a draw in the game. Just feel like a lot of the, the shortcomings of the heroes are kind of lost. Call them null and void with the draw on your team, mitigating yeah. her, giving you that damage. I know what you mean. She's already so tanky, but she doesn't deal that much damage. I mean, toss yeah. the draw there, and then she, can, she does it all, it feels like. Top lane, there's the shards blocking in universe. He's completely surrounded, and Morphling will take that kill for himself. But here comes Fear, along with Crit. They get the Burrow Strike onto Schofield. That's going to be an easy one. And the Soul Catcher is applied to the Morphling right now. And Burrow Strike's up in one seconds. second. They could potentially get this kill. Fear, another Soul Catcher available. And universe has come back into the lane, right clicking the Bane. But there's the Ice Shards again into oh, the Brain boy. Sap. He's just going to die again. He literally TP'd back to death. All right. Now he has to make the long walk of shame back down there. <laughs> that is the walk of shame. It's no worse That's feeling than that in, in Dota. Yeah, for sure. And Pepita in the mid lane, 12 and 7 versus Dumail, 13 and 7. So doing quite well for himself. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Excel. Again in a fight for the right as Fear takes him down with the right click. Crit though, might be the trade. Looks like they'll do a one for one. Another Ice Shard available here. But without waveform, I don't think they can find a kill. Does have a couple wand charges though. He's shifting. But more than tanking enough for those level one wild axes. Yep, they do almost no damage now. Well, the good news is Old Stinger is level 3 now. He's able to devour some creeps. Looks like he took the Seder, so we'll be getting that 
That unholy aura, 5.5 regen a second. Bottom lane, nice. disruption. Into the soul catcher, into the axes, into the burrow strike. Not quite enough to take out Skillfield, at least not yet. Another axes in tow, but again, level one, not gonna be enough to find a kill. So this uh, aggro lane from EG is not really working out. I mean, Morphling, 29 last hits and uh, two kills to his name as well. And he's also level five compared to Universe's three. Like, uh, they can't stay down here much longer. I mean, as I say, that Sand King's going towards the mid lane, but I guess he can't really do a whole lot of arrow coming in. That's a long stun. Yeah, it does definitely connect. And Feeble's there as well, but Crit, Burrow Strike, he's taking a lot of damage with that Star Storm. Pepita with one leap, make it two, but the Wand keeps Crit alive a little bit longer. And in fact, it looks like he lived through the night as Pepita has to pop a Fairy Fire. Looks like Shadow Demon died in the bot lane. And Sumail's gonna force Bane back even further. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, despite this bottom lane kind of being lost for EG, they do have the disruption factor, which deals a lot of damage to Morphling, which we've That's seen true. a little bit of so far this game. And he's gonna waveform in the bot lane. He's gonna be caught though. Soul Catcher into the disruption. And with that extra damage, look at how much damage he actually takes. Kind of He's try to turn it around, though. He is dying very slowly but surely. It's all calculated, my friend. He's actually going to be snowballed in. We'll see if this ends up being a mistake or not. There's a TP support coming in. Waveform is available. He's going to use it. Getting quite low. There's a brain step onto Universe. EG kind of spreading the damage. So very good in their favor. As oh Morphling God, he's not will dying. still live some way, somehow. And again, has Waveform available if needed. Yeah, this hero is He's, uh, so hard to kill. He brings out salves as well, and morphs all the way down to zero in strength or whatever, and then full heals every time. Yeah. Pretty nice. If only they do have vision of him, but they have no global skills, unfortunately, for them. So the hell salve will come out and pretty much heal him right away. But the tri lane continues for EG. They're not giving up. Not yet, at least. Well, at least their Drow is free farming. She's 1v1 against the Doom. Level 7 now, so there is that. And Medusa's having a good time in the mid lane. It's just this bottom lane. And Disruption again, being very annoying. In fact, turning them on to Tusk instead this time around. Probably a better choice. As Morphling is super duper tanky. But yeah, mid lane, like you said, 32 and 15 versus 28 and 12. So an essential wash. I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen Bane come back into the mid lane to try to extend their lead in that in that lane at least but bottom lane will continue the tusk snowball into the arrow into the star storm fears in quite a bit of trouble but he will walk away again All right, lots of kills somehow. just not being able to be finished off here huh. yes I'm just surprised he didn't die oh, yeah. That was a smoke rotation from Intervis, too, to make plays down there. And they were unsuccessful. And crit being scouted out. Looks like old Stinger has Doom available, but... The Sandstorm is there in time. At what level? It's level 20, Marana gets the Mana Break. So, just to paint you guys a picture, as, uh... Looks like Universe is gonna run away in the bot lane. Level 10 talent for Weaver, who gets two attacks because of Geminate, has a 20 mana break skill at level 10. For Marana, it's 25 mana break at 20. I don't understand. I really don't. Yes. It's just how it is. You know, Timber Saw gets 100 damage at 15. It's a little different. Come on now. Come on now, buddy. It is. Moonlight Shadow. This is going to be the first of the game. We'll see if they can actually capitalize with Doom available. It's but Sentry is there. Yep, that was just as the uh, Sand King was placing a ward behind the Tier 1 tower too, so they know what's going on. And just like that, it is thwarted with ease by EG. Crit, the level 2 Burrow Strike ready to go. He's spotted out though by the enemy team. And it doesn't look like they care as the Burrow Strike is applied. Gust onto the Bane, can't really cast anything while that's applied. He is, and Crit's in a lot of trouble. He's going to be chased down with his Scorched Earth. Looks like he will end up... No, he's going to end up juking for now. 
as Fear takes a little bit of residual damage in the backside. Crit staying alive just a little bit longer, but with Schofield here, you have to think that this will be an easy cleanup for Infamous. And they'll try to turn this into a potential tier one tower here in the, in the top lane. Yep, nicely done. So even though the rotation was spotted, they're still able to make something happen, perhaps underestimating how tanky Doom is. You know, this year when he gets levels, he pressures lanes big time. Mid lane Kotar, he waves in, but he's going to get disrupted. Oh boy. Can he actually yeah. catch him though? Uh, crit. Level 2 Burrow. Oh, he's getting blocked. Big time. Big time blocked right there. Very sad. Be hard to find the range regardless. And the tier 1 tower bottom looks to be falling. It'll be a trade though. Although Doom actually wants to. He's going to get roared. He has absolutely no backup to speak of. Gust to follow. And they should have more than enough damage to take him out. So, bit of a mistake there from Infamous. As Morphling will be scouted out. Still very hard to kill. <laughs> nice wave form dodging the Burrow Strike. But here comes the Shadow Demon. Disruption again. Crit just in time with the Sandstorm. The Silence is pretty powerful, but Morphling is super tanky as no. per norm. And we'll be fine. Yeah. You need the Doom if you're going to play against Morphling, it seems. Pretty much. Oh, I guess that's space, though. Sumail Radiant takes mid tower pretty much for free. Yeah, see if he gets it or the siege. Oh, he got it. He did it. He has outplayed the AI. It's it's hard to do these days. The AI is super strong. A very early shadow blade for Arteezy. Is this a potential silver edge game? I don't think so. No, don't definitely not. Just the uh, Shadow Blade to stay alive and do things. So this game is uh, it's a bit weird. It's only a, a 1k gold lead for EG after they've taken, what is it, one more tower than uh, Infamous. So the difference is basically in tower gold. Morphling is pretty farmed. Excuse me. Draw is pretty farmed as well. But I don't know. The game seems so weird because uh, Beastmaster didn't get too much in the offlane. Uh, even the Doom got more. And he was uh, basically solo the entire time. But, um, you know, when you look at Aegis lineup, all it takes is like one or two fights for them to get the ball rolling. So they can steal oh, God. They get the gust. They get the roar onto Doom. Just like you said, the initiation was there. And just like that, they can probably turn this into a Roshan for themselves. Yep. Snowballing super hard. Speaking of snowballing, they'll find fear. And the tier one tower looks to be dead. But it'll be a trade for Roche, and I think EG will take this. Yeah, it dies so fast. You can have an Alpha Wolf creep, thanks to the Beastmaster's Call of the Wild. Oh, yeah, the RNG, man. You gotta love it. Well, Schofield being scouted by Crit, as it looks like Bane will be dropped by Arteezy. Has the Aegis ready to go. Pepita in the top lane. Trying to split push to a high degree. Might be able to take the tier 2 out, but no. Fear is here in time. Just hit level 5. Universe, no roar. But at the very least, it'll be enough to, to force the Marana back. Sumail, in the meantime, has Mask of Madness. Early point booster. The value item. I assume right. that's just going to be a straight up Scotty. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, bottom lane, though. Arteezy. There's the Gust. Not sure if they're going to have enough damage with the Burrow Strike. It could be, but of course, he can cast that, that attribute shift while stunned. In the meantime, top lane, we have the Roar onto Pepita into the Centaur Stomp, but he's got three leaps and a TP. He's fine. All right, he's gone. I At feel like um, three. they're in some trouble when Sand King gets Blink Dagger on the side of Infamous. He's only at 1,000 gold for now, but even without it, they're still finding the openings. And uh, like we saw before, all it takes is one pick to secure an objective. One pick gave him Roshan. One pick could lead to the death of all these towers as well. It's not an easy game for Infamous. And it's like, um, even though they get picks, they're nowhere near as fast to get the same sort of objectives. Yeah, they're trying to set something up on the Morphling, but it's a very difficult kill. All they have to really work with is Gust to be able to do enough damage. They're going to start it off. Burrow Strike is coming soon, but he's going to attribute shift. Schofield's here to help... His comrade out. Waveform available. Looks like he will live. 
feel like we've seen this story a thousand times with Morphling. <laughs> Just the unkillable man. But do they care that much about him? I don't think they do. I feel like they can just group up and run down a lane, and there's nothing Morphling can do about it. He doesn't want to sit there and fight him, so he's just going to go split push somewhere, and then EG have ridiculous tower damage. I believe how much damage Medusa has, and she has no real damage items, just yeah. small value items. It's insane. I mean, the cool thing for, for EG is, a lot of times when you want to play against a Morphling and try to counter him, you build like a an Orchid or something like that, but in this game, you just pressure with tower kills. It's a different right. kind of counter, if you will. Eventually, Morphling's gonna have to respond to this sort of, uh, just tower pushing, and he'll have to fight. He might not be ready at that time. Yeah. Well, at the very least, he'll have Lincolns in the next, uh, 100 gold or so. So we'll likely want to finish that off before getting into engagement, but they might not have a choice here. The Burrow Strike is there. To the Soul Catcher. He's gonna attribute Shift. Very high. Hero roars onto Doom. We'll be able to get his Doom off in time. Looks like the Burrow Strike will find Universe this time around as the Ice Shards will split up the fight a bit. It's a one for one as Medusa's taken out, surprisingly enough. And with the Moonlight Shadow, we'll see if the rest of Infamous can get away. That, of course, was the Morphling Burrow Strike setting things up here. Speaking of Burrow Strike, Crit uses his own to help get a second kill in the form of EG, in the favor of EG. So it ends up being a three for one with Arteezy staying alive with the Aegis. I'm not sure how Medusa died that fight. Did you catch that? I think she got uh, gripped by the Bane, right? Bane and Marana killed him. Oh, yeah. The value mana drain, actually. A forgotten oh. aspect of Fiend's grip. I forgot Good about stuff. the 5% mana drain. Yeah. That's the difference there. I think Ags increases it to like 10. It's pretty insane. Radiance top tower. Maybe that's their oh wait, no. Along. I'm sorry. That's the old Ags. I forgot they changed it to brain sap. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's a three second Bobby. brain sap cooldown or whatever it is now. Yeah, pretty ridiculous. A 1.5, Jesus. It's it sounds great. It's it's really not. Tier two tower now, taking a beating from Arteezy. The age is still available, of course. Universe with the roar. Arteezy's right, just going to walk away with that Shadow Blade. You know, I'm just not sure how Infamous can take these fights. Because, uh, sure, they can snowball in or whatever, but if they snowball into the Stone Gaze or linger around a farm like this and get caught off guard, I'm just going to die. They're trying to take out Papita right now. He has the leap. He's getting pretty slow thanks to Arteezy. He's stunned up with the arrow, though. Disruption's going to keep him alive for now. Old Stinger. Applying a little bit of pressure, gets the stomp off, has Doom available still. Haven't really seen a great use of that as of yet. Arteezy might want to feed this Aegis away pretty soon. We'll be going down to the Adaptive Strike. Here comes Sumail, still has Stone Gaze available. But we'll get Doomed just in time though. Gets off his ultimate. That's going to be huge for them. They're going to pick off the Doom easily. The Gust onto the Morphling, and that is a second huge kill for EG. Nice timing from Sumail. Jesus. Yep, nicely done. Gets it off right before the Doom. You know, Doom has received nerfs over the years. It takes a long time to cast. He has to you know, lift his some... arms. It's uh, I guess his arms the process now. Nowadays. I mean, look at the armor on him. That's true. But it's crazy to see how much like a, a small cast point nerf of an ability makes a difference in game. It becomes the difference between like people getting their BKBs off before Doom or just some defensive ability. Right. Face shift, for example. Ooh. Gus just dodged there by Pepita. Would have been a kill in all likelihood. The, the roar was available. But instead, looks like EG will posture for just a little bit more farm. Hurricane Pike almost finishes. Arteezy will get hit by the arrow. Do they have vision? They have sentries. They sure do. And there's the punch. There's the waveformer. And Arteezy's dead. Snowball to follow. Onto fear. Has disruption. Might have to use it defensively. Pick up that rune before you die, my friend. There you go. That's a good boy. So two kills in the way of Infamous, and that's the kind of stuff you need to come back in this game. Yep, they're not really that far behind. No, they're not far behind at all, but it feels like... Um, it just feels like EG are control of the map, right? They're the ones making the moves on their side of the map so that when they get that pick off, they can snowball into a tower instead of Infamous always playing on their side of the map defensively, but Morphling's getting super, super far got the uh, casual Blade of Alacrity. A 
Okay, what is that? Why does he have a casual blade of lacquer? I guess he wanted to build something else, and then he's like, right. oh, what am I doing? Well, we'll have to find out what he chooses to do with that as Sumail pops the ult. They did find crit to start things off. And he turns into Medusa to turn on the mana shield. <laughs> Kataru. He's losing all his mana. I feel like he should look a little bit differently. It's actually pretty confusing in fights sometimes, especially it when is. it's a big team fight. I'm not sure what they can do about that, though. Of course, has that Lincolns and going to be using the split shot to farm a little bit more effectively. So going the exact same build that we saw, other than the random Blade of Alacrity uh, shotgun build to come. This is just ridiculous since the morph costs no mana, he can always just sit at full HP just off any heal. Even like a warlock heal in lane would bring him up to full HP. Yeah. What do you think it's his crazy. biggest shortcoming is as a hero? <clears throat> We've talked about how great he is on a lot of different levels, but what <clears throat> what can teams take advantage of? He's definitely still abusable in lane. Like, uh, you might not be able to kill him, but you can probably push him out. Actually, I don't know. Maybe you can now because he just morphs down and then sells. No balance, top lane, though. Arteezy. He's going to get gone on. They put down a sentry, but no dust, it seems like. Arrow is going to connect, and that should be enough to take out EG's Drow Ranger yet again. It's going to take a while, though. The universe was thinking about the roar, but we'll choose not to use it. Sumail gets slept, and with that, I believe Infamous will be happy. But what about like after the laning stage, like mid to late game? Um, I mean, I guess he lost that uh, safe split push aspect, right? With the right. replicate from before, where he could go back to it. So now it's a bit different. Now it's a bit more offensive than, uh, you know, split push style. But I don't know. It doesn't feel like a, a big deal, honestly. It feels like he's survivable enough with just the uh, the waveform and the attribute shift is now faster than it was before. I'm really I think that's sure. the biggest deal out of anything is the attribute shift changes, right? Yep, like you're talking about so the split fast. pushing being gone, but like we talked about how, how cool his ultimate is in theory, but how many games have we cast where it just doesn't feel like he's even used it? Right, it doesn't like, feel it doesn't like it's have that, that big of an impact. Unless it's, he manages to get like a three line sanking stuff or right. something. Right. It, it's a, uh, I don't want to call it situational because it can be good quite a bit, but it's perhaps less consistent than what we're used to seeing. I would agree with that. No crit. They have dust this time. Here comes the snowball. He's going to dodge it with the blink. And see if he attempts to TP out. It looks like Skofu will not find this one. Arteezy, shadow bladed up. The nightmare onto Fear's illusion. We'll do nothing. The scan comes out. So Infamous know that EG are in all likelihood doing Roche. The question is, can they do anything about it? Blink dagger on Tusk. You know, Morphling has to walk there. Guard. That's a pretty good item against these uh, drow items for tanking up. Yeah, that's true. That is definitely true. So Roche at half HP. Uh-oh. Double Boros Strike from Crit. There's the roar into Morphling. Kataro's in a lot of trouble. The Nightmare going to keep him alive a little bit longer. But no, the double kill for Sumail. A huge kill for EG. They should be able to get Roche, no problem. In fact, they might even get more kills on top of that. There's the Gust. Talked about the Crimson Guard. It is not going to be enough to survive this time around. And maybe they just push, actually. The arrow will connect, but Papita not dealing out nearly enough damage right now. Went for the Dragon Lance and looking a little bit starved for farm. Yeah, check out. We've got the, uh, the Soul Catcher illusion with the disruption on it, so now they have their own morphing army. They deal 75% <laughs> damage, by the way. That's pretty hard. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, one of the best illusion heroes in the game for sure because of the all the stats you get from the typical builds that you will go. And I mean, this is just a Rax. This is the crazy thing about EG's lineup. Any Drow lineup for that matter. It's not It's not like back in the day where you pick Drow and you need to have at least like four range heroes. At least that's how it felt back in the day. Now it's just like, eh, Drow plus, you know, one is usually good enough. It's not like Fear's really doing that much or yeah. in terms of the right clicks. I feel like it just helps you win these lanes on heroes that were already pretty decent in lane and that kind of pushes them over the edge. Like you see a uh, Puck with Drow quite often. Yeah. Oh, they're scouting it out. They might need to go for this. Tusk snowballs in. The Nightmare's there. He's going to steal the Aegis. I'm not sure who the cheese went to. He got to. the cheese too. He got the cheese. What a god. But it's going to cost him at the very least the Aegis, if not more. Beastmaster will die. 
Medusa stuck inside the pit, has Stone Gaze, will use it. It's going to be on the Morphling, in fact. He's dealing a lot of damage to both Doom and Morphling as a result of the Doom applied to Medusa. So Mael, he's taking a ton of damage with the Infernal Blade. Will finally be taken out. It'll be a trade, though, as Crit finally gets off Epicenter, but really to not much avail as Fear and Company will try to turn onto the Morphling. The Tusk snowballing in onto Arteezy on the other side of the map through the cliff. He pops the Shrine. There's the Dust into the Ice Shards. He is stuck, and the right click should suffice as Infamous. A freaking really good fight for them. Let's look at the fight recap real quick. Wow. 2,500 gold swing in their favor. That was uh, quite an impressive Roche steal. He got ages and cheese off that. Insane. Pretty sick. Yeah. Keeping them in the game. But Roche went to EG, I do believe, right? Because it was snatched. Yeah. Okay. Right. Not that it matters that much, but needed to be said. So, yeah. Perhaps uh, a little bit greedy from EG. Going for, I mean, obviously you do go for Rax first, but to go for Roshan right after. Instead of, technically they could have gone for the Shrine. But it's more of a good play than I think uh, a negative one from EG. But Blink Dagger almost online now for Universe. Fear with the Force Staff. Crit with his own Force Staff. Lots of mobility on the side of EG. And then for Infamous, of course, we talked about the Crimson Guard for Doom, but he has real, no way to catch up and actually cast Doom. Kind of the issue with this hero. Burrow Strike is here. Is that half HP into the roar? The Nightmare will keep him alive a little bit longer. In fact, so that might tanky. be enough. He really is. Crimson Guard doing huge work. Arrow connects on Fear, and the Star Storm should be able enough to take him out. Papita leaps away to safety. Burrow Strike is going to connect on Bane. But the right clicks excel. You are donezo, my friend. Sumail, with that Drow aura, is something to be feared. Top lane in the meantime, Kataru. Tier 3 tower taking quite a bit of damage. I've seen this split push before on Morphling. This is how Resolution this did how it. That's how it used to be played. TI. That's right. That's right. Shrine's taken out. TP's here. Don't think they're going to be able to find anybody, though. Universe has enough for Blink Dagger as well, so... So, still awesome fight, obviously, in the Roche Pit for Infamous, bringing them back in the game. But it's EG's game to lose, I feel like. They're they're setting the pace. They're setting the tone. Would you agree with that? Yep, I couldn't agree more. Like, uh, the Morphling feels so farmed, but... I don't know. It's the, the Shadow Demon effect, right? He's not as effective as we're used to seeing in a lot of these games. Like, the SD illusions. He's got to be careful getting disrupted. Also, the uh, Soul Catcher helps them destroy him and cut through his uh, his health pool. It's not bad at all. And we're going to have a smoke here. Arteezy. Finish the Silver Edge, by the way. We'll talk about that in a, in a short minute here. Trying to find the Doom on the sidelines here. They're placing wards. That might be all they find as the majority of Infamous are... Traversing towards the mid lane now. Yep, the problem with the smoke gank is Intimus are going to have to go back EG or playing around this pushed in lane so they actually have an objective to converge onto and Infamous, they have to respond. And uh, maybe they can use this opportunity to get uh, to flank. Marana has a double damage here. Maybe she can come in from the back. Yep, true. We are seeing the Shadow Demon Illusions being used offensively now to siege down this tower ever so slightly. And do. Oh my god, it dies so fast to the illusions. Yeah, it's already at half HP. Pretty crazy. Sumail, extremely tanky. Actually, backpacks his evasion for now, as looks like they'll find Bane on the backside. Tusk puts himself in a very precarious spot. Schofield's just dead. So two kills out of nowhere for EG. Of course, they do have buyback, and they're not the highest priority kills necessarily. But still. How come Sumail has this in the, his backpack? Of the TP scroll or something, or even oh, a cool no, That's a good question. Strange. Maybe he hasn't noticed, but fortifications popped. Kataru dodging. The Mystic Snake, actually, no, it'll still apply. Takes off the Lincolns. And his Siege Unit, aka Sumail, is just going to town on this bad boy. See the Enfeeble and how much damage like he still does. <laughs> yeah, and the Illusions, too. They'll start to deal damage whether he's Enfeebled or not. That's a good, uh, that was a pretty good response to the Bane Enfeebling, the uh, Medusa, the Drower. Mm -hmm. Definitely helps a lot with that. Yeah, for sure. 
There's the roar initiation from Universe, and the right clicks will suffice. Oh, he's going to get nightmared up a crit with the epicenter initiation into the stone gaze. Of course, Sumail is still nightmared on the backside, but that's a dead bane, and that is no longer. Oh my god, Pepita leaps in and eats the cheese. We'll be fine for now as the Doom is applied to crit. Force staff onto Sumail. I think that was the wrong way. He gets Waller's punch out, but a beautiful gust from Arteezy. They're going to clean up the Doom, no problem. Kataro. Not a whole lot he can do in this situation as Universe jumps in with that big fat tomato. Pepita does not want ketchup this evening, my friends, but he will oh go my down God. regardless. Tomato did it. It really did. Universe for the win. <laughs> as three dead it for infamous. <laughs> and this is looking to be like the beginning of the end here. As EG, all right. They lose some mail. So Guitar doing a lot of damage there, but he can get it. Burrow struck up. No tough oh, snowball in time. And the last remaining it's member is Gofield. damage on it. The illusion? <laughs> yeah. My god, they're going to make illusions of it. Oh my god, look at... Oh, oh, that's disgusting. That is actually filthy. As GG's come out, so Infamous is eliminated from Dream League Season 8. The Major, of course. And EG will extend their lifespan. They're in the top six right now. All right. Very convincing series from EG. I like the way that they uh, approach both of these games. They're very uh, proactive on the map, taking all the objectives, doing Roshan pretty much as soon as it was available. It looked very, uh, it looked very good and clean. Like um, good and you clean. Their... You say. <laughs> That's right. It was 